Well, today is a day of celebration. It is a day, yes, when we celebrate fathers and all that they mean to us and all that they do for us. We've done that. Check. Good to go. Now, here at OBC, today is also a day of celebration as we celebrate three people being baptized, declaring their faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and coming alive in Christ, celebrating them being children, not just creations, but children of God. We also today in OBC recognize and celebrate all those folk, young and old, in our church family who are completing educational milestones, whether it's graduating from high school or college or university with whatever degree they might have. Now, all of these things are important and significant. But here today at OBC, more significant and more important is our worship of the one true triune God. And so today is a day when we once again celebrate for each and every one of us, regardless of where we are in our walk of faith, for each and every one of us, we celebrate the love of God as shown fully and completely in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Today we celebrate with the psalmist who wrote in Psalm 122, 122, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So regardless of what is happening in our lives or in our world, we always keep our eyes on the prize, always keeping our eyes on our Heavenly Father. Now the parable story I have chosen for us today is indeed a story about a father and about a certain type of fatherhood. But this parable is so much more than a real cool dad. I love this story because it's a brilliant, brilliant summation of the entire good news gospel message. Everything you need to know about the good news of Jesus Christ is found in this story, believe it or not. The story has it all. It has a father who his father helped create a child. We'll call that, chi- that father Awesome Dad, because he is an awesome dad. It has a son who wants to do things his own way. And he sets off to do so. We're going to call the son for today's story, Freedom Child. It has the son, Freedom Child, living a wild and fun life and discovering that it may not be all that he thought it might be. It has the son's, Freedom Child's, realization that he needs his father in many ways and for many things that he hadn't thought about before. The story has a turning around, a returning to the father in humility and humbleness. It has a loving father, awesome dad, who graciously and joyously welcomes his son back with no condemnation, no conditions, simple, joyful acceptance. And it ends with a party, a celebration, because the lost is found. Friends, this is the gospel. And friends, this is also each one of us, you and me. You see, folks, we are all creations of God. God is ultimately our creator, more so than even our earthly fathers and mothers. Again, the psalmist writes in 100 and Psalm 139, verse 13, he says, It is he, God, who has formed us and knit us together in our mother's womb. 
He is our heavenly father who surpasses even our earthly fathers in our need for him and our requirement of him in our lives each and every day. St. Augustine of Hippo wrote this. He said that our hearts are restless until they rest in God. And so, friends, we are indeed like that prodigal son in this story, freedom child. We're blind and we're ignorant to what our actual needs truly are. Unaware of the blessings of being in our Heavenly Father's presence in his house, in his providence. We're just like freedom child in that we want it our way and we want it now. Now it's interesting that in this teaching of Jesus, this parable of Jesus, that it's the younger son that is the focus of this story. For in Jewish family dynamics then and even now, it was the older son who was the star of the show. There was the heir, the older son, and there was the spare. Does that sound familiar? Maybe Prince Harry can relate. <laughs> and the younger son, well, he could have felt many things. He could have felt overlooked, underappreciated, restricted, unimportant, not valued. Any number of things. And so he wants out. Does any of this sound familiar in any of your lives? There was a time many years ago when as a young boy of about seven or eight, I did not get my way from my parents, believe it or not. They resisted my charms. And so I packed up my little Cub Boy Scout backpack I threw in a pair of socks and a t-shirt, a PB&J sandwich, and off I went, hit the road. My parents caught me as I was just heading out the door. And because I was going out, they said, well, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm leaving. I was setting off on my own because I could do my own thing and I could do it better. And my mom and dad, being wise as they were, said, well, have fun with that. <laughs> Let us know when you get there, wherever that is. So off I went. I walked around for a while in the neighborhood. Went to the park next door. Sat down, ate my PB&J sandwich. Got up and walked around a little bit more. By this time, of course, it was getting dark, and I had forgotten to pack my Cub Boy Scout tent and sleeping bag, and I needed a place to sleep, so home was as good a place as any, and home I went. In our relationship with God, whatever that relationship looks like or doesn't look like, we often feel like we are misunderstood, underappreciated, overlooked, and we simply want to be away from God as we perceive Him. And so we, we run away from God. We run away from God and we strive to enjoy the freedom that we so desperately crave not realizing that our pursuit of unlimited freedom will eventually destroy us, and it does. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the great German theologian, martyr by the Nazis, he wrote this, the pursuit of ultimate freedom drives man to ultimate depravity. And he lived that in Nazi Germany. This is what the prodigal freedom child discovers as he is in the muck with the pigs. Isn't that a great phrase? Sounds like many of our situations in life, doesn't it? In the muck with the pigs. 
something we might experience. This young man who was spent in his inheritance on having a good time, in fact, the scripture says, on wild and riotous living, really was in the muck. Not only that, but we hear later on in the story about Freedom Child that he returns home to his father. And as he returns home to his father, he obviously is in a terrible state. The boy is broke. He's got nothing. His father says, bring the best robe and put it on him because he doesn't even have a robe on. His father says, bring him shoes and put them on his feet because he doesn't even have shoes on his feet. He is destitute. He is broke. How does that freedom taste now? But here, here's we come to the first point of grace in this story. Freedom Child comes to realize just how destitute and how broken he is. Not just in his physical state, but in his spiritual state as well. And he says amazing words. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Now just think on this for a wee moment. This was a good Jewish boy living far away in another country and he was sleeping with pigs, a forbidden, unclean animal in the Jewish faith then and now. He has sinned against the law of Moses, a law given by God to Moses in both Leviticus and Deuteronomy. And even more than that, Freedom Child had the audacity to ask his father, his living, present, loving father, for his inheritance. And what he was essentially saying to his father in doing so is, I wish you were dead. Broke commandment number five of the Big Ten. I wish you were dead. Father, I have sinned against you, against heaven, and before you. You see, friends, to realize his true state of being was a gift from God. And that's grace. That is what grace is. It's a gift that is not merited or warranted, but it's given freely for our benefit. Gifts given even though we don't deserve them. And so Freedom Child, he realizes his sin. He confesses his sin. He turns away from the muck and the pigs. He repents. And he starts the long walk back to his father's house. Friends, God's grace in our lives is just like that as in the life of Freedom Child. By God's grace, we realize our true state, not just our physical state, but something much deeper and more profound, our spiritual state. We realize our brokenness. We realize our sin. We realize the muck and the pigs that are in our life. We realize and we confess. We repent. We turn around. We begin the journey back to our Heavenly Father's house. And so, here we all are this morning. Thanks be to God. Here we are this morning knowing of our utter need and dependence on God. Knowing that there is only one way, one way that we can possibly make it right with God, with Him, and that is through Jesus Christ, His only Son, who alone has paid the price for our waywardness. And He has cleansed us from our sin. He's washed away that muck, the stench of the pigs. We're cleansed by Christ's sacrifice and made right 
to return to our Heavenly Father. Now, you know, friends, our Heavenly Father has seen us from a long way off. And He has compassion on us regardless of our circumstance. And He has sent to us, each one of us, Jesus, His Son. And through Jesus, His Son, He showers us with grace. And when we come home, He runs to us And he embraces us, and he hugs us, and he kisses us, and he says, welcome home, my child. No longer a creation, but a child of God. And he says, bring the best robe. Put new shoes on your feet, for you are a new person. And then, then there's a party. All of heaven, the scripture says, all of heaven rejoices. The angels rejoice. And throughout heaven, all you hear is this, another lost son returns, another lost daughter coming home. Another lost sheep is found. Another dead soul revived by Jesus. Amen and hallelujah. This morning, today, This is what we celebrate more than anything else. And these baptisms which we are witness to now, which we celebrate, this is what was proclaimed. Souls that were dead are now alive. Folk who were lost are now found. Father's Day indeed. Thanks be, thanks be that our Heavenly Father loves us in the muck. He lifts us from the muck. He takes us from the pigs, waits patiently for our return, and throws a huge party upon our return. Friends, yesterday we were lost. Today we are found eternally. We celebrate. Amen? Amen.